Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today, in the beginning of what's changed in update 6.2 week, we are back in the perpetually frozen and snowy London to look at which something that people generally seem to be describing as the worst tech tree line in the game, or one of the worst, the British heavy cruisers. Because the British heavy cruisers have been buffed. Now this is the Goliath, the tier 10 of those British heavy cruisers. And she has received a 0.5 second improvement to her firing, a rate of fire, and she has gotten a 4% better dispersion, so half a dispersion module. And more importantly, or more interestingly rather, a new ship skill has been introduced. Not actually a ship skill, a passive skill. The sort of super heal. So if we look at it, she now gets uh, the single fire torpedoes, obviously, the extra heal, and this thing, which is the last icon here, the emergency repair, which means that we recover 15% more hit points from repair kits. Now, if we are looking at commanders, and th th in this case it's a legendary commander, but I'll also look at normal one, this one would give us an extra 22.5% hit point recovery when using repair kits, and if we were to look at um, a normal commander, he would give us 15%. So basically, you're getting the you're getting the uh, tier five commander skill for free on these ships. So how much of an impact is that going to make? Well, um, let's look at some numbers and statistics before we proceed. So with a historical camo and an effective total HP of uh, 46,773. We, uh, I've, I've done the numbers for both the regular heal and the premium heal. And the regular heal gives us 14.3%. The premium heal gives us 16.7%. So the two setups are uh, regular heal, regular commander versus premium heal and legendary commander with the extra heal skill. And then on top of all of that, we get the super heal. So the difference on the regular set between previous and, and new is that you do about 1,100 points more, uh, hit points more, you get about 1,100 hit points more back than you used to. With the combination of the premium heal and the premium commander, you get about 1,400 hit points back, more back than you used to. So you can not quite print yourself a new ship, but uh, you can recover uh, somewhat more la larger amounts of health. So in order to test these uh, these changes, both the improved reload, the improved dispersion, and the better heal, I've again played several battles, and you're gonna get to see two of them. One with the regular setup, which is a ten a level ten commander, and one with the which is what you see here with the premium consumables and with John Jellico. And I have actually uh, not used his armament repair expert because the the she, she's got both def AA and sonar and it's worth, in my opinion, getting the extra the extra charges here. But the important skills sort of for him here, for the Goliath, you get the better survivalist for 22.5% HP recovery you get the fully prepared plus for 20% repair kit cooldown time, which makes an awful lot of sense because you've got four of them. You do get the improved mist weaver, but then again, these things only get two charges. And I have actually used the IFHE. Now, why am I using IFHE and not APCS? I, I can already see the angry comments. <laughs> Terry, you should never use IFHE. The AP, unfortunately, on these ships is bad and the APCS, I've tested both. The APCS does not improve it significantly, in my opinion. Uh, if you want to, APCS or not, if you want to, say, damage a carrier, you got to get into point blank range with AP. The AP is sort of useful for two scenarios, in my opinion. If you are firing at destroyers at longer ranges, or if you are firing at targets at very that are very lightly armored at point blank range, so at like five kilometer or less, 
or if you are firing, uh, if you're this close to an enemy ship, say a battleship, that you can reliably hit bow or stern sections, then you can use the AP for extra, uh, for extra damage. Otherwise, in my opinion, the HE is the way to go with these guns, because uh, if we are if we are comparing the let's compare the Goliath to the Hindenburg, because the Hindenburg also has twelve guns, and is also a heavy cruiser. And uh, on paper, at least, the Goliath does more damage. However, the Goliath has a 13.5 second reload versus the Hindenburg's 10 second reload. And while the AP on the Goliath technically does more damage than the AP on the Hindenburg, the AP on the Hindenburg <laughs> hits very hard. And that is not quite the case with the Goliath. So uh, even with APCS, I find that the uh, AP damage output is lacking. And the HE is relatively powerful on the ship, so for most scenarios, HE is a relatively good decision to go with. Looking at the Elite bonus, you really get two choices, which I think both are viable. You can either go for a little bit extra hit points, a little bit more A, and 7% Traverse, or 20% Traverse. Both are viable because the turrets are a little sluggish, and while you are looking like a big ship, and you are technically a heavy, a very heavy cruiser. The armor is <laughs> in tier 10, definitely not holding up. So that's all valid, uh, valid choices, both of them, in my opinion. And the, uh, the, and the historical camo again gives you large caliber AA range. So there's actually a, a little bit of an, of a combination effect here, leading to a total large caliber AA range from, of 3.4 kilometers, which is not great. And the large caliber AA on the ship also isn't the greatest. But you do get the defensive AA to double that. Still a relatively short range and not quite as suitable as support as other ships are with that. Equipment. So you could say, oh no, <laughs> why are you not using the main Matri Mod 3? Honestly, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, yes, she did get a 4% dispersion improvement, but that's really minor. Um, the dispersion is okay, and uh, I find that uh, get, getting the reload, the reload really is, is my bigger problem on this ship, because you do need to, you don't need to use the guns. The torpedoes are okay, but you, you can't, you can only use them very situationally, and you only get four on each side, so uh, you you could go main battery traverse to keep your guns on target because that is really annoying that the turrets are traversing that slowly, or you use the elite bonus to get you the extra twenty to get the same values. Um, if you feel that the dispersion module gives you makes you more effective, by all means go for it. But uh, I personally like the like to go with reload and. As much as it pains me not to use steering in slot three, but this ship is so big and so high above the waterline and so easy to obliterate that concealment for me was the way to go here. And uh, like I said, two games again, one game with a regular setup and a level 10 commander and one with Jellico who is completely upgraded. And yes, I have not taken the giant hunter because I find that I've relatively rarely actually get to use the torpedoes. So with all that said, we are getting to a reload of just under 13 seconds, which is on the slow side, but we have 12 guns and we have an 11% fire chance. So that somewhat offsets that. The range is a bit short and yeah, the traverse is atrocious and the surface detection, even with the concealment modules is at a, a workable uh, a workable eight kilometers All right let's go and see her in action the first battle is domination on the atlantic and uh, the matchmaker was that quick to throw us into the game that i actually didn't get to press the record button <laughs> while the uh, opening screen was still up but i think there are a fair amount of bots in this game so uh, I, I will open the the team list when once uh, once we get once we get into it but uh, yeah, extremely aggressive matchmaking <laughs> these days. So uh, we are, uh, let me just pause it here for a sec. Uh, we are up against a enemy Haku, a Moskva and double Shima. The rest is all bots. 
which puts us in a relatively positive spot. Now, obviously, the Moskva is probably a large danger for us, and the Haku if he focuses his fire, but at least we can punish some of the aircraft on the way out. The Shimas can be a little bit of, a tr of trouble because of the extremely long reload, but uh, we do have a decent amount of firepower to, to defend ourselves with. So let's continue that. And uh, it, it is domination, so the daring is going over into C cup. And I'm kind of debating with myself to follow him there, but then I'm seeing the, the Haku planes coming in and the <laughs> my, 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 cru my cruiser player uh, thing kicks in and I'm like, no, I need to provide AA support and uh, and help out again, help out around the center cup and make sure that the the carrier doesn't necessarily break through. Friendly carrier spots are what is probably one of the Shimas. Uh, we do have a Regolo with us and uh, obviously now keeps the Shima spotted. I'm not quite in range yet. There we go. And now I can start opening up on that thing while he's busy dodging carrier torpedoes or not dodging carrier torpedoes. Uh, this has all missed, so sonar up just in case um, there are any Shimakaze torpedoes around. But um, okay, he's now stopping and trying to dodge the regular torpedoes, which has meant that he's running straight into them, and that is the end of the Shima. The enemy carrier seems to be focusing on the bots first, which is a legit strat, especially that they have a double Des Moines, and Des Moines bots are dangerous. Uh, so that Daring's got his work cut out for himself, but uh, there's the Moskva. So uh, I will try and see what I can do about this thing and um, attempt to burn him down from over here. Uh, he's not focusing on me just yet, and it looks like it's an HE Moskva. So uh, that's good news. <laughs> HE Moskvas are, are, are generally helpful. There's a battleship on the left, but uh, that's a bot, so I can ignore it for now. And yes, the, the bot Des Moines are shredding, but that's a fire on the Moskva. So, and it's an insta Damacon on a single fire, as, as expected from an HE Moskva. So uh, now we now we can we get to work on uh, trying to set permafrost. Oh, I think he switched to AP, and uh, that's one fire set by somebody. And uh, Moskva is now trying to disengage, but uh, it's already got a double perma burning. Unfortunately, it wasn't, uh, wasn't my doing, but I think it was one of the bots that actually set these fires. Uh, or it's the regular, but um, now I've got one fire in as well. And uh, now the Moskva is focusing. Okay, I'll take that back. He does know how to use armor piercing. <laughs> Good on you. But uh, at this point, uh, I've got... Um, I'm not sure if I'm in radar range. I can't remember what the radar range on this, or even if the Moskva does get radar. But uh, we are now threatening the Haku as well. And shooting the occasional fighter down. So... Uh, I think the Moskva at this point is going to burn down, so we will get some shots off at the Haku while he's being while he's spotted. Uh, set fire here, and um, because the Haku is is taking our Regolo under uh, under fire, and I think the Regolo just killed the Moskva. So now it's just a matter of providing air support and doing our best to get that enemy carrier killed. And he's not quite in torpedo range, but uh, I think that's a that's a perma fire. And uh, setting permafires on carriers is good. So, <laughs> and a friendly carrier helps out as well. And that's a triple perma. So <laughs> there we go. Gets a bit of his own medicine there. And yeah, providing AA support and uh, also keeping the bot Des Moines at bay because these things are very, very dangerous. So uh, we will we'll do what we can there. And yes, that's another fire. See, this is where the Goliath sort of works pr reasonably well if uh, if the enemy team chooses to mostly ignore you <laughs> and uh, lets you set fires and you get lucky with the you get lucky with uh, with the fire chance as well. So that bot Des Moines should run into some torpedoes. The Regolo takes out the Haku and uh, yeah, that that should be game at this point because I think uh, once that bot Des Moines is dead, there's not an awful lot left of the enemy team and yeah like i said this was the while well, the regular is still getting airdropped by the friendly care uh, by the enemy carrier uh, i haven't had to use my heels quite quite a lot but uh, having the having the extra 15 percent is quite nice especially if you combine it with uh, if you combine it with the uh, commander skill but uh, it does not make an awful lot of a difference like i said in uh, initially i think it's like 1100 points extra hit points that you get back which is nice to have 
especially since you have four heels. But it also means that uh, you really need to be careful with this ship in general. You can't take point. Um, I mean, you generally can't take point with cruisers in tier 10, but uh, you do need to hang back a little bit, which, uh, given the relatively short range of the guns, actually makes this uh, makes this quite difficult. And on the Hindenburg, if you were so inclined, you could use the legendary module to get you more gun range at the cost of some concealment and play that thing at even longer ranges and uh, be more dangerous that way. But uh, in the Goliath, and I think we've just found out where the Shimakaze is, <laughs> so uh, yeah, he is chasing the carrier. Uh, but yes, in in the Goliath, you do need to, you do need to not be focused because this is not a ship that can, um, in in line with most British ships, can do any kind of armor tanking. <laughs> but uh, uh, if she gets focused by battleships, she gets shut down extremely pr quickly, and you're nowhere near as nimble as as you are in a Minotaur. So a dodging incoming fire, given how large and how, especially how high above the waterline also the ship is. Uh, it's not it's not easy uh, but you can if the enemy team mostly ignores you do a decent amount of damage now that doesn't mean this is a good ship so let's go again but this time around with the full-on legendary equipment and the second battle is domination on haven we are have no carriers but we're fighting monty lion stalingrad baltimore ibuki halland and shima so plenty of torpedoes in that one, but we do have a sonar for that. Uh, now, like I said, you have sort of a problem because y you need to be, you need to keep the guns firing to make anything happen, but the, rel the gun range is relatively short. You don't have the rate of fire in something like a Des Moines that would allow you to play bow in. So you do, and given the balanced tur uh, the turret layout, you do only get 50% of your guns pointing forward. Which means that uh, you sort of need to, you sort of need to, like this, right? You need to give angles, in a, sufficient angles to get your rear turrets on target. Now, the, the forward angles aren't bad on this ship, but uh, you also don't have the world's greatest maneuverability. So it really becomes a matter of careful positioning and making sure that you're getting out of there when things get tough and use the heels to recover some health uh, when you're running low. Which is easier said than done, but this is also one reason why I'm sailing with the concealment build here. Because she does not have a lot of endurance in engagements. And she does need to disengage when it comes to it. There is Halland. I'm debating myself if I want to shot, get shots out at Halland, but I think uh, they're never going to hit. And uh, our Jutland is taking the risk there, but um, there are some... Uh, there are some other things that we can shoot at and stay undetected. But I do want to get into myself into C-Cup. And I think Jutland has seen the error of his ways, could have told you that before. You do not want to go into B-Cup. <laughs> so uh, the choices of targets here. We've got an Ibuki, a Baltimore. We've got Lion over there. We've got Holland over here. And uh, I am running the sonar just to see if any torpedoes, early torpedoes are coming through the gap. But... Um, I can also use my smoke to uh, to assist the battleship line that we have here. There comes the lion. So um, smoke up. I'm not sure he's targeting me even. But uh, this smoke isn't so much for me. It's for my friendly battleships. Some torpedoes just generally uh, through the line. And then we will uh, we will open up at the lion. Uh, we do have a, to keep, an, keep a bit of an eye here. While, uh, while sitting in front of this gap. Because it is Torpedo Alley. But I am trying to... Yep, there's a double fire. Damacon. Uh, presumably. There is Halland over there. And there's still another destroyer. Oh, triple fire. Now Damacon, right? Uh, I'm not sure if it's on cooldown. I haven't seen him uh, taking any fires. No, that, now he damage controls. Okay, it's a bit late, but uh, I'll take it. Uh, yeah, the enemy team predictably is um, is concentrating around B-Cup. And we appear to have lost our Ibuki. That was... Was it an Ibuki? I'm not sure. That was in there, but all, all the enemy uh, cruisers over there are already looking relatively damaged. So our battleship line is doing what it's supposed to do, and uh, the Jutland is now returning uh, after being fa after facing all that opposition over there. And that looks like a potential kill that we could take on. But I'm now starting to come under fire, double fire from the Baltimore. The I'm going to damage on that for now. Because I do have heals available to counter any kind of potential uh, potential things. But there's a lion, again, in a good position for me to do something about. 
So um, I am going to get the again the torpedoes away, and uh, and we're going to get try to set, to set another fire on the lion while reversing. There is Holland out there, so sonar up and just to give us early warning of. And there's also Shima. Let's see if we can do something about these two. And yeah, I think these are Holland torps. So a potential perma flood, which is which wouldn't be nice, but uh, it's not the end of the world because I can. Yep, there it is. Because I can, um, I can heal a fair amount of that damage back. But I just now need to back up to uh, to not draw too much fire, and also because my battleship line has completely retreated <laughs> and uh, is no longer interested on um, on being anywhere inside that capture circle. But we can. Uh, it's not under, C is not under threat. So um, I can make I can still make myself useful with setting fires on the Baltimore over there, and then I am going to try and disengage while the Colombo takes out the Baltimore from long range, which is perfect. And yeah, we we've, we are running already low on hit points. One of the enemy battleships is going the long way around, and that's probably the Montana because we haven't seen that thing yet, and effectively has taken himself completely out of the game for, uh, which is is a bit of a bummer. So now they're down to three ships. The Montana is not in danger to anybody. And there comes some torpedoes. Uh, we've, we've still got the Shima. Yep, there he is. There's the Shima. So I, I will try to stay on Shima, but I have managed to heal back um, a fair amount of, of hit points. Okay, wow. <laughs> and I am, uh, I, I've still got two heals left, so I could potentially, I think Shima might be out, honestly, when we'll blind fire into the smoke, but... Um, uh, I might just go and uh, might just go and go for B cap, and uh, just leave the Montana back there around D. But uh, I, I've still got some uh, some survivability remaining if I needed to. But uh, that, that's sort of the style that you want to, I guess, play in the Goliath. Um, is it a good ship? Um, <sighs> I'm struggling to say yes. I think it's not quite as bad as its reputation is said to be. But uh, um, especially if you're running a full a full hit point build, you actually have a fair amount of survivability. So if I was going to use these two heals, I could still get myself back up to almost full health. Because I think I get about 11,000 points back uh, for from each premium heal with the full HP build. So it's more of a... Um, get in there, try to set some fires, try to exploit a situation, and then get out of there. The big problem I see is that there are other ships that are much better at these sort of things. <laughs> so, um, I, I would I would struggle to 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 see why I knew I, ne I needed to play this ship. Um, it's it's a it, it's a hard proposition. I, I know that there are some people out there who who are actually playing this line and who presumably enjoy doing so and i think if you were if you were to attempt to play this then that's the way to go at least that's how i would go about it the full hp full hp recovery build especially now with this with this addition that gives you basically an extra 15 percent health back uh it, it's 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 not completely dreadful but i would call it i would call it an okay crew an okay cruiser an okay heavy cruiser for for tier 10 that can do a, can do some things it's got some utility it's it sort of has to rely on rng and setting fires which is not the best thing in the world because it means also your battles de extremely depend on what you're facing and is very very vulnerable to battleships and even even other super cruisers so if you're facing off against even French, <laughs> even the French super cruisers will will cause you a lot of problems. Um, so I think it's not the greatest ship out there, but it's it certainly is playable, and uh, you can have some fun in it. So um, there's that, and that's it for me today. Thanks everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.